Hi, and welcome. Today's lesson is on uh, power supplies and specifically how to correctly select the power supply for your computer in question. So the first thing we want to know is what our power supply and what, what we need to know. So we have to know the correct form factor to make sure that we buy a power supply that fits inside our case and, and has the right plugs for our motherboard and for other items, which goes to item number two, which is to make sure we've got the correct plugs. The only way to know that is to go through an inventory the inside of our PC and say, does it have a plug for all the things that are currently plugged in if I'm replacing it? Or does it have all the plugs for the things that I'm building it to to make sure I've got everything I want? And along with correct plugs, we may want to also make sure it's got a couple extras for expansion if we know that we're going to add something else in the future. And the last one, and the one that we're going to talk about today, is making sure it's got the correct wattage. Now, the wattage, as we talked about previously, is the total power that a power supply can put out. And that total power needs to be greater than what the PC needs. If the total power is less than what the PC needs, it means that it can't create enough energy for all the components to turn on. And therefore, those components will not turn on and therefore will not work. So we go through and calculate the wattage. And today we're going to um, look at the wattage requirements for a number of PCs. And each PC, we have to look through the entire specifications of the PC because we're going to be looking at some online PCs to decide what wattage power supply we want to get for that particular PC. So in order to do the do that we need to know what's in the PC and what the requirements are for everything inside the PC because everything in the PC contributes to the total power that the power supply has to create. So we're going to take a look at those. Now there's a lot of different power supplies out there. These power supplies have different form factors, they have different plugs, they have different wattages, and they have a wide variety of costs. You can see they can go as low as $20 and as high as $400. What we need to do is figure out which one's the right one for us. So to do that, we've got, first of all, some terms that I'm going to use throughout this section of the class that you need to understand. The first one is calculated. We are going to do some math, and it's all addition and multiplication, nothing overly hard. And we are going to calculate all the individual parts together to figure out, figure out the calculated wattage of the PC. So calculated means, and this is whenever I use the term calculated, it means the wattage that all the parts of the PC together calculate to, what they add up to, okay? Anything below calculated theoretically will not work. That PC won't turn on or some component won't start or it might start, but it'll burn out faster or turn off after it's been going for a while. So below calculated, the power supply will burn up, fail, die, power off, cause issues, make us, uh, I supposed to say mad, not make us may. Um, so calculated is the number we're first gonna figure out. The next number that we're gonna use the calculated to work with is that number rounded up to the next 50. So if we calculated, for instance, a number of 340, the minimum would be 350. Now, we just said below calculated, the computer wouldn't work. However, they don't make ones that are 340 watts. Most power supplies, most, not all, are in 50 watt increments. They sell 300s, they sell 350s, they sell 400s, they sell 450s. So you're gonna round up to the nearest 50, to the next 50, we're rounding up, to say that is the minimum wattage of power supply that I'm going to look for to buy. So whatever I calculate, that's a number. Then I round up to the next 50 or the nearest 50. That's the minimum wattage that I'm willing to accept. If I look at a computer online and if it meets the minimum, my computer will work. Okay, that's what the minimum is. My personal recommended is that minimum, num minimum number plus 50. If I add 50 to the minimum, uh, it's going to run slightly more efficiently. I'll be able to add things like memory and hard drives without any problem, a couple fans. So I'm going to always recommend that you get the minimum plus 50. 
So the minimum specificity, this allows a buffer uh, and it's above minimum, realizing that I would recommend even higher than that possibly because the last term, so I've got calculated that I figure out, minimums I round up to the next 50, recommended I added 50, and then efficient, efficient is a whole different thing. And here's, here's why efficient is different. If we looked at all the power supply ratings that we looked at last class, and we looked at those, and if you look at where is it most efficient, all of the power supplies, all the way up until you get to titanium, which are the rarest, most expensive power supply, all of them are most efficient when they're at 50%. So the platinum gets 92% efficiency if it's at 50%, only 90 at 20, and only 89 and 100. Meaning that the, the best efficiency for almost every power supply is half the load, half of what you calculate, okay? So when I look at that, when I say, what's the most efficient one I would buy, I'm gonna multiply the calculated by two and then and then go to the nearest 50, okay? So if I come up with 782, when I double it, I'm saying an 800 watt power supply would be the most efficient one. Um, so, and I, I didn't, and so it's rounding up to the nearest 50 there. That's that's efficient. So I need to understand those those four terms because I could give you on your test, for instance, a, a PC link and say, hey, what's the recommended power supply for this? Or I could give you that and say, hey, what's the calculated power supply for this? Or I could give you that same PC and what's the most efficient power supply for this? So you need to understand all of those. I'm going to buy one of these two, meaning that the minimum the, the lowest wattage, I shouldn't use that term, the lowest wattage when I go to, go to buy is going to be that recommended. And I'm going to buy anything between there and the most efficient. Anything in that range is where I'm purchasing. And I'm honestly going to buy probably the least expensive that's between recommended and efficient, unless they're really close, which they're not going to be. But if they were really close, I would obviously want to go uh, personally with a more efficient power supply. So that's that's the terms you need to understand. And then now we're going to get to how we figure those things out. So initially we're going to use a laundry list. And this is a, uh, a way that I like to teach students to do it first because um, it lets you see and understand more clearly how they add together. Um, so today we're going to use this wattage worksheet uh, the sub has a whole bunch of copies already printed out that he's going to hand out uh, for you guys. But we're going to walk. I'm going to walk through this and show you how to use the wattage worksheet. So basically, we're going to use this like a laundry list when we're looking at a PC, and we're going to add all of them together to figure out our calculated value based on the PC in question. So let's let's take a look at this. So the first thing it says motherboard includes the basic CPU, fan, keyboard, and mouse. So Every, every single PC that we look at is going to start out with 100 watts. Then, for every stick of RAM, we're going to add five more watts to our requirement. Then we're going to look at our, our CPU to see how much it's pulling. And just so you know, the, this wattage worksheet is based on uh, some flatline values. There's going to be some that, that are far more, some that are a lot less. It's just to kind of get you to work through the, the issue. And if if you use this, you would be safe um, uh, with almost any computer that you buy. So looking at this, I look at my CPU and I said, how many cores does it have? If it's got one to eight cores, it's going to use 100 watts. Nine to 16 cores, it's going to use 200 watts. And if it's got over 16 cores, I'm saying 250 watts. And we're continuing to add these together, okay? The next one I've got on this list is a graphics card. What kind of graphics card does it have? Now, if it's integrated, if we're not going to add a separate card, then nothing, because it's part of the motherboard. Um, if, however, we're adding a card, if it's a low-end graphics card, it's uh, 50 watts. If it's a mid-range, it's 150. And if it's a high-end or specifically has the word gamer on it, we're going to call it 250. And some low-end gamer cards do not use 250 and in the problems i give you 
I'm generally going to tell you, hey, this is a mid-range graphics card or this is a high-end graphics card because we haven't done the graphics chapter yet and you don't know how to rate those. So I'm going to tell you, well, you're going to either have to find out is it integrated or is it low-end, mid-range or high-end is going to be something I'm going to tell you. But on all the cases, if it says gamer, we're going to say it's a high-end. And then we've got the drives that could be in our computer. Does it have a CD uh, or a CDRW? Does it have a DVD or a DVDRW? Does it have a Blu-ray? Does it have a conventional HDD spinny hard drive? Does it have a solid state drive? And those are the wattage values that those pull. Most of them are not going to have 10K high-speed drives. Um, they're going to be standard conventional. And then what other things does it have? Does it have any other cards in it? How many extra cooling fans does it have in it? How many other USB devices or is your systems going to require? And we're not going to have those on any of these you're working on because the keyboard and mouse is already included up here. Um, does it have a dual fan CPU cooler like the one that I showed you in my classroom? If it's got two fans, we're going to add another uh, five watts for that second fan because we already saw here fans. I'm only saying three, but because it's a CPU cooler and it might go really, re might be working really hard, we're, we're saying five on that one. And the last one is it if it's got a water cooling system, it's going to be 25 watts. So that's what the worksheet looks like. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at a PC and look at how we can look at those things to figure out that. So again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the calculated value of all the things that are pulling power in our PC. And then we're going to round up to the nearest 50 to get the minimum. And then we're going to add 50 to say this is recommended. And then we also had that most efficient value, which is calculated times two rounded up to the nearest 50, because we just said that power supplies are most efficient when they're at half load. So again, just so everybody understands that if we need 400 watts and we put in an 800 watt power supply, it uses less power than it would if we put in a 400. It runs cooler because it's not working as hard to do that. So a lot of times people are like, oh, I got to put in the exact same number. No, absolutely not. More spare wattage is good. But once you get past 50, it starts to get less good. You can see that it goes down once I get too far away from 50%. So 50% is that efficiency sweet spot that we would be looking for if we're looking for the most efficient power supply. Okay, let's pull up and look at a PC. Okay, I am always going to use Newegg because although Newegg is not where I necessarily buy everything, uh, Newegg has the most information of any of the purchase sites uh it fa is far better than amazon and and many times i'll um shop at newegg and then go look for the item at amazon to see if it has a less expensive price especially considering i can get it tax free for the school at amazon and usually shipping is free but newegg has the best information so we're going to look at this hp desktop for 539 on newegg right now one of the nice things about newegg is if i scroll down on the page I'm going to see where it says specs, and then I can go and look at the specs that are important to me. So I've already copied and pasted this over into our my sheet, and I did that so that it would be easier to look at those numbers. So these are parts of that new egg page that I've just brought over. So when we look at the motherboard, um, we know that we've got 100 there. And then the next thing on here is RAM. So I'm going to look for memory, and it says it's got two memory slots it says how much capacity but what is it actually got in there and it's really really strange um, what this one has in there i'm going to go back to the hp page real fast and look and see how much ram it says it has it does say it's got 12 gigabytes of ram so when i go down to the specifications on memory uh, it says it's got one 8 gig stick and one 4 gig stick. By the way, this is the absolute worst way you could put memory into a computer. It'd be better to have two 4s almost than to have an 8 and a 4. We'll learn about that later. Um, and in fact, it's kind of lying to us, right? It says memory. It's got an 8 and a 4. It's got two slots and it says one available. That's a lie. There's no way it can have an 8 and a 4, which uses two slots and have any available so this is a this is 
this is one of those ones that we got to look at it. So it's, it's got two sticks of RAM. I, I'm just going to uh, shorten that up uh, to look at that. So right now we've got 100 and we've got another um, 10 on here for that. And then we're going to go look at the processors. How many processors does it have? And if we look at this, I'm going to slide this over here. Uh, if we look at the processors, it says it's got six cores. And that's what we're looking for, six cores. So it's got another 100 for the CPU. And then we're going to look at the graphics card. And we're going to look, there's a couple ways to look, to look for the graphics card. I'm going to show you the first one. I always take a look at the pictures on the PC. And there are none of the back of this one, so that's not going to help me out very much. Although we can see there's nothing on the front of this one. Uh, if we look over here and we look down at the specifications under graphics, it says ADM Radeon integrated graphics. So that's a big zero. There's no none of that. Uh, if we look over here on storage now for the drives, there's no optical drive at all. So there's no CD, DVD, or Blu-ray. Under HDD, which is a conventional drive, it says no. And then under SSD, it's got a 512 gigabit PCIe. So I'm going to go down here and give that five. After that, is there anything else that set this, sets this one apart that I need to look at? Now, the audio is integrated. The comms are integrated. We're going to have to go and look back at that page to see if there's anything else that jumps out of us. Now, there, there's nothing that I can see in the back. There's no side fans at all that I can see. I can just see a vent there on the side. So I'm going to just browse down through here and look. Quick info. There's our info, information that we already looked at. And we can see right here the power supply in there is 180 watt gold rated power supply. We'll see if that meets our recommendations. Um, going down, going down, going down. I don't see any mention of any other fans or anything else. So we are done with our calculations. So we've got 215 is what came up with calculated. So calculated for this one equals 215, which would make our minimum. We round up to the next 50. That'd be 250. And our recommended would equal 300. And if we wanted to do our most efficient, multiply our calculated by 2. If I could spell that right, there we go. That'd be 430. Round it up, it'd be 450 would be our most efficient power supply that we could get. So that's our calculator, our first one we looked at. And one of the questions is, does it meet the minimum? And that's what we're looking for, right? We'd well, like it to meet the minimums or at least the calculated. And this one meets neither of them. The power supply on this one is only 180 watts. So what does that mean to me? Now, I'm going to say HP probably did the nitinoid on every single part that's in here, and that probably meets the requirements for this one to run because they're going to meet the, the bare minimum so that they don't have to replace your power supply in the first year, which is usually what these are warranted for. However, I only have one 512 gigabyte hard drive. I don't have a video card. I can add nothing at all to this PC to get it to work. So that's what we take away from this one. Let's go ahead and look at PC number two. We'll look at a gaming PC next. Okay, this time we're going to look at this Thermal Take gaming PC, gaming desktop that we're looking at right here for $699. Not a ton more for probably a much nicer computer. Now, we can look at this one as we do a little walk around of this computer. We can already see one, two, three, four fans, that center one right here is part of the CPU cooler. Let's see if we can see anything else. We obviously see it's a gamer. We're gonna have a high-end video card on this one. It does a bunch of di different colors. That CPU cooler, if I look at it, only has one fan. That's just the one. It doesn't have one on the other side. Um, let's see what else we can see. Looking at the back, this is a 3U 
No, that's a 2U. It uses two slots for our video. That's just a card that was put in there. Uh, we can see that this one's going to have Wi-Fi. We've got HDMI out. We've got integrated network on there. We can see this fan from the back. There's our power supply. So next, we're going to go ahead and do the calculation for this PC. So this time, I'm going to set it side by side so we can go down through here. So I'm going to scroll down. And then I, when I see specs pop up, I'm going to go ahead and click on specs. So the first thing we have to look at is that we know we got the motherboard. Let's go ahead and go right to RAM and see how much memory is on this one. It says it's got 16 gig of DDR4 on there. And how many sticks does that work out to? Now, I looked at that picture when we were popping in there. And I could see how many sticks that it looked like it had. Let me go full screen again on this. And we'll kind of slide this over and see if we can have a if we get a good look of how many sticks of RAM are in there. And if I look in there, I see two sticks of RAM in this machine. So I can see both those. Those are RGB RAM. They've got RAM that lights up really pretty. Uh, and you can see what that is. It's got a thermal take um, RAM cooler on the stick of RAM. But there are definitely two. Oops, that's the back. There are definitely two sticks of RAM inside this PC, one right there, one right there. So we'll go ahead and we're going to say that it's got two sticks of RAM on that. Then the processor, this is the CPU. Let's go and look at the information on the CPU. It is a six core processor. And if you can't find it, you can always do control F and type the word core in there and then you can see it highlighting everywhere so this time we're looking at right here so if we wanted to go ahead and start filling in some numbers i'll go ahead and pick another color so we can see it a little better so we're going to say 100 here and then we've got oh let me pick a slightly smaller font so it'll fit in here there we go we've got 100 there and then we've got 10 for the RAM, and we've got 100 for the CPU. And then graphics card, we already said it's a gamer, so it's high end. So we're going to add 250 for that. So let's go back now and look at the other specs on this one. We've got, in fact, if we go down to the um, graphics card, it is a GeForce RTX 3050, which is, I'm going to say, for the current video cards, at the low end of high end, but it's still high end video card. Um, and we'll go continue on down here. Storage, we've got a one terabyte solid state drive. We got no spinny drive. We got no optical drive. See if we've got anything else down here. No, we don't. So, so we're going to go ahead and go down here to the, if I can get over there, there we go. We're going to go down here and say we've got one solid state drive for five watts. But then we had uh, those other things. So we had no other PCI cards. We only had the video card. We had four cooling fans. So we're going to add 12 on there. And it doesn't have a dual fan cooler and it doesn't have a water cooler. So we've got those numbers that we're going to add all together uh, to figure out the calculated on this one. And remember, those fans, the only way to really figure it out is to do that walk around. I see those three fans, four fans. That's part of the CPU cooler. So I've got those four fans. So now we just have to do the math to do that. And I highly recommend you just use your system calculator. There's no reason to make mathematical errors. So I'm going to say 100 plus 10 plus 100 plus 250 plus 5 plus 12 for a calculated of 477. So calculated equals 477. So our minimum then would be that rounded to the next 50. Rounding that up, that'd be 500. So our recommended then would be at least 550. So we've got a little room and we know our most efficient, most efficient there is gonna be that calculated times two so I take that 477, multiply it by 2, equals 954. And if we round up to the next, next one, we're going we're gonna to go all the way to 1,000 watt to be the most efficient for this one. Realizing it was 954, I'd probably buy 950. Um, but uh, to get right on what I said, we round up to the next 50, not to confuse you there. 
so those are our numbers for this particular com computer. Calculated 477, let's slide those over and see if this one, which is made as a gaming PC, actually meets those requirements. Let's see if we can find what the actual power supply is on this one. Brand, no, processor, processor. This one's got a 600 watt power supply. So it definitely meets the recommended. In fact, it's 50 above the recommended. This is a nice size power supply for this gaming system that we're looking at buying. Realizing that it doesn't say whether it's a 80 plus, a bronze, a silver, a gold. So we don't know what the true efficiency is on this one, but we do know that at least it should last a while because it meets our recommended that's really what we're shooting for, recommended or above on the power supply. So let's do one more example. And then after this next example, you're gonna work your way through the quiz. And the quiz is five different PCs. And you're gonna use this sheet to go to a PC to try to figure it out. And you can talk with your neighbors as you do this. Um, you're gonna do the calculated for the rest of the class on the five PCs to figure it out. So let's do one more first. Figure we might go crazy on the last one. This one is a 24 core liquid cooled AMD Threadripper for $5,199. And we'll see whether this one actually has what's required to make this sucker work well. Let's take, uh, we don't have a lot of pictures. Um, I'm going to let you know these three fans here are not. Uh, because it's a water cooling system, this is part of the water cooling system. That's why it's 25 watts extra. That's what this right here does. This is the CPU. It's got a water cooler right on top of there. It's only got one case fan. Oh, can, are these case fans in the front? Oh, I think they are. They're not lit up, though. I'm going to... I don't see a center there, but I see one there. And I see one there. I'm going to go ahead and call this three case fans on top of it. So let's go ahead and shrink it, ink this down, go to the specifications, and take a look at what this one has. First of all, again, we've got 100 watts on the motherboard. Let's go down to the memory. It's got 64 gig of RAM. And this one's a hard one because it doesn't specify. And I'll try not to give you ones that don't have good pictures. But if we go and look at this picture, we can clearly see those are that, well, clearly fuzzily see. Those are the four sticks of RAM. So this one has four sticks of 16 gig RAM. So we're going to use four for that number right there. And let me scroll back down again to the CPU. This is a Ryzen Threadripper. 24 core, it even says this right up here. It doesn't say it down here in, in this list, but it's 24 core. So we're going to use 250 watts for that. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the graphics card in it. It's got an NVIDIA RTX A2000 video card. Now, I had to look this one up. This one says power consumption is 70 watts. We're going to consider this a mid-range card. We're not going to use that 70. We're going to use this 150 sticking with our sheet. But I had to look it up because I hadn't seen this video card before. It's actually a pretty decent video card. This one's this one is probably made more for grass, graphics design people. We're going to use the mid-range number for that one, even though when I looked it up, it says 70 watts as I look at that. As we go down here, storage, it's got two hard drives. It's got a one terabyte PCIe, and that's a solid state. And it's got a 10 terabyte hard drive as well. I don't see anything else on here. So let's start working our numbers over here on the left-hand side with what we just figured out. I'm going to go ahead and make this color red again so it makes sense. So we say we've got 100 here. And we got four sticks of RAM, so 4 times 5 is 20. We've got 24 cores, so we're going to add another 250. We've got a mid-range graphics card, so we're going to add another 150. That's from right here on the mid-range graphics card. We've got a conventional drive for 10, 10, and we've got a solid-state drive for 5. And we've got four, three cooling fans for 9. And we've got a CPU water cooler for 25. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my calculator up again. To figure this one out, so we've got 100 plus 30 plus 250 plus 150 plus 10 plus 5 
plus 9, plus 25. 579 watts is our calculated. So I'm going to say calculated equals 579, which makes our minimum equal to, rounding up to the next 50, 600. Our recommended equals 650 because we added another 50. And our efficient number is even going to be higher. If I go back to my calculated, multiply that by 2, we've got 1158, which means our most efficient power supply is in the 1200 watt range on this one, which would be very expensive. I'm going to go ahead and pull this over, and we're going to look and see whether this very expensive... Oops, I didn't type the 1200 in with that. How did I do that? There we go. We're going to see if this very expensive system, what number it meets for us. So I'm going to go to specs again. Let's see. Um, adamant power, doot, 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 doot. And this is going to be one of those very normal thing for ha to happen. I've got specifications that don't even tell me what kind of power supply. I don't see anything on there. Let's see, look for the word watt and see if we can find that. How about PSU? See if we can find that. Thermal take, oh, there we go. It's listed up in the top. It's got a 1,000 uh, watt, 80 plus gold power supply. So it definitely meets our recommended, almost meets our efficiency standards for the most efficient. It is an 80 watt or 80 plus gold. So that's, that's great. It's one of the more efficient power supplies there. And yes, we're playing $5,200 to get that. And we could build one way better for way less money than that cost is right there. But hey, it's already built for us and it even comes with Windows 11. So there you go with three examples of PCs. It does take you going through the sheet. They're all going to have motherboards. They're all going to have memory. They're all going to have CPUs. And they're all going to have at least one hard drive. Most likely a solid state, might be a solid state, might be a, a spinny drive. In this case, we got both for our $5,200 plus a liquid cooled CPU, which is nice for that uh, particular Threadripper 7960X CPU, which by the way, is one of the fastest CPUs made. Uh, if you look at the 7960X, it is the 29th fastest out of 4,862 CPUs. Uh, for multi-threading, it's the 74th fasted for single thread operations, which you wouldn't buy this 24-core 48-thread uh, uh, CPU for that. But we're going to talk about CPUs more in Chapter 5. Uh, I just wanted to bring you here, and that's part of the reason this one costs so much. Uh, but it's still overpriced for what we're going to get for it. So that's how we calculate our wattages on our PCs. You're going to go through and do quiz 3.4 today, which is going to take you to links to CPUs. You're going to use that wattage worksheet, figure it out, and then answer the specific question um, on those particular ones. If you're in a section that didn't get 3.3 done prior to today, you're going to obviously need to do 3.3, uh, the quiz, the lesson's been given. Um, in order to unlock 3.4.